the data cloud diaries, JDBC driver access into data cloud from dBeaver. So we're bringing all this data into data cloud and we might be able, want to reach into it from outside of data cloud. And one easy way to do that is through what's called a JDBC driver. And that is the probably an old school way of using JDBC drivers to have it look like it's a database and reach in from a JDBC client. There actually is a JDBC client that you can enable on your data cloud so you can access it. And we're gonna be using the open source DB, dBeaver application where we're gonna be using dBeaver configured to reach in to data cloud. And I'm gonna walk you through the steps to do that. And I think it's really powerful and worth knowing. So here we are in the help. You'll see data cloud features and there is actually documentation for connecting on to the JDPC driver. And if you follow and you want to use the dBeaver to the client, you would connect dBeaver and we have the steps to connect a connected app. So from here, you find the dBeaver community and there I'm running on a Mac and I downloaded the dBeaver Mac and then it walks up talking about doing installing a JDBC driver. Well, turns out dBeaver has it built in. And so what we're gonna do is if we actually go right here to dBeaver, and here I am, this is dBeaver running on my desktop, already connected. But if you go to a new database connection, you'll see the Salesforce CDP. And this already has the driver. Now I did need to do a get update, but it was automatically through dBeaver, just check a box and tell it to download the driver. So now I have the Salesforce CDP, a previous name for data cloud, already set up. And then what you needed to do is to set up a connected app. Now I've shown you in previous sessions where we've used a connected app, we've authenticated, and we've actually run queries here. So where we've run queries from Postman but these have been Postman going to the Postman API, not actually going through a JDBC driver. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna walk in, you're going to download dBeaver, and you're gonna go and connect and get the database app. They'll select this and it then asked me to uh, download the latest version. And now we're gonna create a connected app and you'll see right here, set up a connected app and it walks you through the settings. It's gonna walk you through the API name, some of these four or five callback URLs that you're gonna to need to give it. And you need the OAuth scopes. These are important, manage user data, your data cloud profile data, and setting up the ANSI SQL queries right here and the ability for it to reconnect using it at any time using the offline access. So these give you query access to your data cloud data. And what I've done is I have set up this accordingly. You'll see I've given it those scopes. I've given it these callbacks. Um, and then this has been set up and the, re the requested 10 minutes is followed. And you need the consumer details to be brought in. So from here, what I would do is, let's see if I can get it through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to edit the connection. And so I created a new connection with the, it had the default connection because of my CDP. I used my username and password and security token. So this contains my password and my security token. Now a key element is you go into driver settings and these values came down with the CDP. But what you needed to go is to driver properties and I'm not gonna show these to you, but these, I had to add these properties manually, one for the client ID and one for the client secret. So that way, and then I hit test connection and it worked. So what that now gave me is you have follow, as I said, you follow these steps where you're going to save, set up the connection, bring across your client ID and client secret. And the key thing is I had to add these one by one as separate properties. 
And now I have this login access to Salesforce CDP. What it gives me is a really the ability to do a query. It's hitting the default namespace, the default data space. I can pick on one like booking. And what I can see is I can see the columns and the keys and the representation. And so this way, and I can actually see the data in there. So this is SQL access through JDBC um, to the point that I can actually start right running SQL queries, SQL queries. And so like if I were to go booking underscore, let's, let's pick a, a property and a name, name underscore C. And I'm going to go back, select ID underscore this. We'll do comma, name underscore C. And let's execute this SQL query. And now I have the SQL query. So I now have the ability to do SQL JDBC access into my data cloud instance. And I've got the ability to have this discovery. So I could be here on the case. I can then see the columns and actually start taking a look at the data and I'm seeing my data. So this is really powerful. This capability by setting up the DB for access gives me JDBC access. Now this through DBver is a nice interactive SQL client to the data. Now you can also be downloading just your generic JDBC driver. Um, and you can then plug that JDBC driver into other applications. So you could have custom applications that can be running SQL access into your data cloud data, which I think is extremely powerful. And the interactive um, DB or application for querying. So I can be looking at, let's assume these rentals, I can query it and I can start to actually go to my data and see data being brought across. So this is really powerful discovery on my DMOs and DLOs, having them be available through the JDPC driver. So I've shown you in previous videos how we're creating this data into our data lake. I'm showing you how we're creating data actions and pushing out platform events. We've seen how we can reach in through Postman and hit the REST API and run queries. But now we're showing you that we could reach in through JDBC and hit it through SQL, powerful SQL. So your .NET applications, your Java applications, any other applications can be reaching in and querying your large amount of DMOs, data model objects and DLOs, data lake objects, as your um, data cloud data grows and you get all this actionable data. And now you get access to it. You have access to it through a myriad of different access points. So thank you for building into data cloud. Join me again, same bad time, same bad channel. Subscribe to YouTube, Steve Tech Arc, www.stevetechark.com and hit the like button. Thank you very much.